Maybe I should unmute myself. Hello, everyone, and hello, Facebook. Hello, YouTube. Thanks so much for tuning in. We are live uh, from Vancouver, uh, the home of the Vancouver Aquarium Marine Mammal Rescue Center. And um, I am really fortunate to be with a whole bunch of great people now that have all disappeared. Oh, my God. Sean is the only one who's still alive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's bad. Um I can totally talk to Sean. Is everybody else still there? Can everybody say something? Hello? Yep, we're all here. Hi, Marcus. Hi, Marcus. <laughs> okay, this is going to be interesting. Um, anyway, the Vancouver Aquarium Marine Mammal Rescue Center rescues more than 100 marine mammals every year. And uh, they were in an interesting position last year as they were followed by a documentary crew filming for Wild Pacific Rescue, which premieres in just two days. And... Um, I want to talk to them about it, and um, it looks like I'm going to start with Sean uh, with my introductions. <laughs> <laughs> Sean is a veterinary technologist with the Vancouver Aquarium and the Marine Mammal Rescue Center, and um, Sean, um, <laughs> uh, I want to ask a few questions of everyone, and I'm going to get to the rest, I, I promise. Um, but um, veterinary technologists, they are usually not found in a place that deals with marine, with marine mammals. Um, how did you find yourself working with marine mammals? What brought you to the rescue center? This is a story that I've told so many times, and Lindsay's already laughing because she knows what I'm going to say. First off, I just want to say hi, everybody. It's so great that everybody joined in. We're super excited for this. Um, so actually, uh, it's actually pretty common to have a veterinary technologist in any setting where you need veterinary care of animals. Uh, so we work really closely with the veterinarians to kind of provide the best care and, and do the best that we can for the animals uh, that are in our care. Um, 
I actually spent the first about 11 or 12 years of my career uh, in a veterinary clinic. And Lindsay and I actually worked together in that veterinary clinic before she went to to tech school to become a vet tech. Um, and then once she graduated from tech school, uh, I would always see her, um, you know, photos of the amazing animals that she worked with. And uh, I was always supremely jealous as a vet tech. And so jokingly, I kind of one day said to her, like, I'd love to work with you guys. You should hire me. And she was like, you start in a week <laughs> or a month. It was a month. You start in a month. And I was like, cool. Okay, here we go. So I lived on Vancouver Island at the time. And uh, I basically put my life in storage and moved over to Vancouver in 2011 to work with uh, with Lindsay and Marty and the team. And, uh, and yeah, haven't looked back since then. I've heard the story so many times, but it's still <laughs> fascinating, Sean. Tell us all about you. <laughs> um, actually, we're going to do something really fascinating. I'm going to uh, end our Skype call because we're doing this via Skype and somehow it's not working as it should. Um, and I'm going to be right back. So, Sean, you're going to hear me in a few seconds. Okay. Okay. And let's see... No, they're still gone. Oh, no. I can see them. <laughs> yeah, we, we can see each other. And we yeah, look good. Yeah, <laughs> oh, now, now I have Marty and lost everybody else. But oh, that, well, that's the important thing. That Mini works. Marty. Yeah. <laughs> Just so little. <laughs> like real life. <laughs> So I can't zoom here. Um, uh, Marty, you're the head veterinarian at the Vancouver yeah. Crime and the Marine Mammal Rescue Center. Uh, but that's not the first time you've, you've dealt with rescues. How did, you, how did you get to the aquarium and what got you involved with rescues? Oh, um, you know, I, I think marine mammal uh, medicine, particularly having to do with marine mammal rescue, is something I've, I've always been interested in since I was a, a little kid. And kind of the, the route I always wanted to take, and I've been very, very lucky. I've, I've worked now on the East Coast, the West Coast, the uh, United States and Canada and been invited around as well. I got my real first start as a, a veterinary student um, during winter breaks and summers working at the New England Aquarium in Boston that, that had a big rehab center and actually one of the first uh, rehab facilities in the United States. Um, uh, from then, uh, after vet school, I went to the Mystic Aquarium that also had a, a marine mammal rescue um, uh, program that was, that was very, very active. And then I was incredibly fortunate and moved to California and joined the team at the Marine Mammal Center, which is the largest marine mammal rescue center in the world. Uh, I was there as a staff veterinarian for almost 10 years and, uh, and, and loved it. I mean, uh, the caseload there was, was absolutely incredible. And then uh, I got a little bug about a uh, positional thing up here in, in Vancouver. Um, Dr. Dave Huff has been the vet veterinarian here for, for a long, long time. Um, and, uh, you know, I looked at it as a mentor as well as friends. Uh, was retiring and, and looked at me one day at a conference we were attending and said, you know, Marty, I'd, I'd love it if you, you came in and were my replacement. I think that'd be a lot of fun for you. And we, you know, I grew up in Canada, we spent a lot of time in the U.S. We had uh, one kid at the time, and uh, I was very, very excited to, to do another chapter in Canada. And, and uh, if I was ever going to leave my dream job at the Marine Mammal Center in California, it was it was for this. And I've been here for about 15 years, and uh, I've never regretted a single day. Great. I just want to ask you, no regrets. No. <laughs> oh wait, let me you think sure about, about that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's there's working with Sean. That is actually yeah. a major regret. But uh, other than that, no. yeah, I was I was kind of disappointed. I didn't find any clips of you working with Sean together. I wonder why that is. No, it's like uh, Superman and Clark Kent. You'll actually never see us in the same room. Um, <laughs> we're we're actually the same person. Um, no. No, I don't like that at all. <laughs> yeah, no, that's not right. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm really glad to have you all back now. You're all with me. Yay. <laughs> okay. So um, let me go to Courtney. Uh, you are a veterinary fellow. Perhaps you could uh, just let us know what that is to begin with, because I think most people have no idea. Yes. So after vet school, um, you don't necessarily have to, but if you want to go the zoo, aquatic, wildlife medicine route, um, it's typically advised to do like a small animal roasting internship after you graduate vet school. And that kind of gives you like a really nice foundation of, you know, clinical knowledge in medicine of mostly small animals like dogs and cats. 
Um, and then if you want to go the specialty route, um, you typically go to a specialty internship or a fellowship, which is what I'm doing now, and then a, a residency, ideally. So I'm doing, I'm doing my fellowship or internship, um, and it's just for a year. But um, luckily, Marty and the team gave me a shot. And so I'm with them for um, a year until the end of uh, June or July this year. Um, and get to learn as, from them as much as, as I can during that time. That's so cool. And um, I'm not sure when you applied for the for the aquarium and, and for the rescue center, did, did you have an idea of what you would be doing in that one year? You've been you've been with them for about a year now. They put you in charge of the rescue center. Um, <laughs> yeah. Was that something you expected would happen? No, I mean, it was, it's been kind of a, a weird trip for sure. Um, I've been here since July of last year, 2020. And then, of course, the pandemic happens um, in the middle of, you know, being accepted and then starting. So that's made things a little bit more complicated. Um, but, you know, we've made it work and just, you know, we still do the best we can at the aquarium and the rescue center and being involved in the disentanglements out in the field. Um, it's been really great. So, yeah, it's been wonderful. I can only imagine. Um, and now, uh, actually, Lindsay, now that we have you back, um, <laughs> let me ask the manager of the Marine Mammal Rescue Center, Lindsay Eckhurst, um, what brought you to the rescue center? And if my notes are correct, you've been there for 14 years as a manager. Is that true? Uh, yeah, I started in 2006 um, as a, what at the time was called a, a specialist, a marine mammal rehab specialist. Um, there was only a small group of us at that time, and um, about a third of the amount of volunteers that we have at this time. So, yeah, 2006 started there, and then 2008 actually started in management, so kind of worked my way up through uh, the years. But um, my background is obviously I went to school as a veterinary technologist, um, working with Sean for a few years before in our hometown of um, on Vancouver Island. Um, you know, really solidified the fact that I knew I wanted to work with animals um, and kind of just happened upon um, this job with the Vancouver Aquarium. Um, I was actually doing an internship down in Washington at a wildlife rehab center and this job came up um, and it was perfect timing. And again, I haven't really looked back like the rest of them for whatever reason. No regrets. No regrets. <laughs> <laughs> for whatever reason. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for whatever reason. <laughs> well, um, that only leaves one person who I haven't introduced yet. That would be Emily, uh, Emily Johnson. Uh, she is the assistant manager and that puts you in charge of, uh, well, uh, you're known for your organizational skills. I guess uh, Linz would be in charge of chaos management and you are her assistant. <laughs> yep, I take all the rest of the chaos, <laughs> I guess you could say, definitely. Yeah, Lindsay and I have a great working relationship. We um, we split things up really, really well. And uh, yeah, we try to make sure we're doing jobs that really highlight what we do best. So, What's your favorite part of the job? Oh, um, <laughs> my favorite part of the <laughs> yeah. I, I would have to say um, my favorite part of the job is the people that I work with, which seems really strange because we work with some of the coolest animals on the planet. Um, but yeah, no, I, I go to work every day with my best friends and, uh, yeah, I never wake up in the morning and go, Ooh, another day. Yeah. It's, it's pretty fantastic. Um, if I had to pick a second thing that I love, I do love being in the field. Um, I love to get out on the boats and do a disentanglement trip. Those are, um, kind of like the icing on the cake. I bet I've been on one of those and, uh, uh, I'm, I'm glad I was just the observer and didn't actually have to do anything, to be honest. But uh, it was fun just watching you guys. <laughs> um, I think uh, it's uh, time that we learn what Wild Pacific Rescue is all about. So uh, we're going to watch a trailer together and uh, then we're going to talk a little bit about the show. On Canada's magnificent Pacific coast. Let's go get them. A group of charismatic and devoted veterinarians has one mission. Giving these animals a second chance at life is just the greatest feeling saving the lives of wild marine mammals and setting them free. There you go, big fella. That's how you do it, my friend! Their motto? Every animal counts. Wild Pacific Rescue. Series premiere, April 14th at 8 on Cottage Life. 
Yes, um, great trailer. Uh, the panel actually couldn't hear the audio, but you know what that trailer is all about. You've seen it so many times. <laughs> Might be for the best. <laughs> Um, Linz, first question to you about that show. Uh, when you first learned there would be a TV show uh, being made uh, at the height of summer, the busiest time of the year for the Rescue Center, what were your thoughts? I had, I had many different thoughts, um, but I think <laughs> the biggest one was obviously um, we do such great work all year round and for us to be able to actually uh, to have somebody tell the story for us. We've done a lot of media with small other sh or small shows, um, even internally as well. And so people have an idea of what we kind of do, but to really capture it all um, with the different species that we deal with. And also you get a little bit of the relationship that all of us have. Um, it's, it's really great to put it all together. So i um, super excited for, for people to see that. Um, you know, there was a time when, when we were not possibly going to be able to shoot this um, for the summer and it was a little bit disappointing because obviously we'd worked so hard and uh, to be able to put this together and, and COVID um, despite COVID in general we were able to to do some really great work um, with such a great team of staff and of course our volunteers too so lots of different emotions and you'll get to see it a lot in the show too. And Marty You appear in every episode, as do most of you. Um, what what can people expect from that show? What are they gonna What are they gonna see when when they get that look that we're advertising that look behind the scenes? Well, <clears throat> exactly that. You know, um, the, the camera crew uh, was embedded with us for many months and followed us through thick and thin, and they're gonna see us at our best. Um, they're gonna see um, real life. And, you know, the animals that we deal with uh, come to us in, in really poor shape. They come to us because they really, really need us. And they're going to see all of that. And, um, you know, it's, it's really intimate. Uh, it's really in there. Um, the crew was amazing at picking things up uh, that we take for granted that, in hindsight, when you look at an episode, you go, wow, that, I mean, that's really, that's really cool. That's kind of special. Um, I, you know, I can't believe we actually did that stuff. Um, it, it looks great. It's shot in 4K. Uh, it's, um, it feels great. It's sort of surreal, I think, when you watch it. You don't actually realize it's, it's us because it looks so good, <laughs> especially me. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's cool. It gives you a real look at Marine Mammal Rescue and, and also a little peek behind the scenes of the aquarium, too, which I think sometimes people forget. But there's, a, there, there's definitely a few key stories going on at the aquarium because we all work there as well with, with some really amazing species. Okay, um, I guess um, a, a good way to illustrate what you just told us um, a, a, a about some of the drama, I think uh, we can watch another clip um, if I find the right button. Yeah, let's let's have a look at one of those sea lion rescues. I've been on one of them uh, just as an observer to take pictures and uh, that was one of the most amazing things I've ever, ever, ever been to, I've ever been a part of. So uh, let's have a look at what it looks like uh, when Dr. Marty and his team are at work. We're looking for a stellar sea lion that looks to have a pretty serious neck entanglement. What we really need to do is find the animal. The animal in it. She does look like she had a ring. That's her. That's her. I got her. All right, you guys, let's go dart this thing. You got a good shoulder there. Take it, take it, take it. Dart in. Dart in. Target in the water. All right, let's go get her. I need some help, you guys. Huh, unmute myself. I'm, I'm getting this. I'm, I'm getting the hang of this. Um, <laughs> um, so I threw my questions away. Um, Marty, um, pressing the Marty button. Um, Marty, <laughs> um, tell us a little bit about uh, what, what, what people are seeing in, in that clip. What, what is it um, that you're doing that and why are you doing that? <clears throat> well, um, I, you know, I think the Pinnitad Disentanglement Program that we've helped develop uh, is probably um, my single most uh, special program that we run. It's the closest one to my heart. And it is a way for us to deal with um, garbage that directly impacts animals along our, our coastline here in British Columbia. We work with a biologist named Wendy Sanislow who estimates that any, at any one period of time or any one point in time, 
we have approximately 400 California and stellar sea lions that are entangled, mostly in past plastic packing straps, also all sorts of different garbage, um, some discarded fishing gear, that sort of thing. And those animals are um, suffering. Um, we know from monitoring them over years that invariably most of them will die from those injuries and that death will take a very long time, sometimes months. And it is not a not a pleasant way to go. So the development of that ability to remotely immobilize those animals, get out there in, in sometimes interesting conditions, and have a chance and, and the opportunity to go ahead and and deal with those injuries and give those animals a second chance, a comfortable, pain-free second chance of life. I think that's you know the easiest kind of example of the good things that this team can do, and people like us around the world can do. And uh, that that program is 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 very very special to my heart as i as i said but that's really what it is it's, it's an absolute animal welfare oriented program that does great things if we can get out there right and it's it's sort of i don't know before i became involved with the marine mammal rescue center i'd never heard of uh disentanglement nor did i did i know about uh, the problems that they were facing that they were getting entangled in those past six steps but um in in particular the uh the uh, disentanglement is that is that something unique to the rescue center here in canada are, uh, are you the only ones doing that is, is that happening somewhere else in the world It, it's a very unique program uh, to us. We're, we're the only facility that can do that sort of rescue in Canada. Um, and and we definitely have been part of developing that program. It, it did start at the Marine Mammal Center when I was there, and it was something that we continued and kind of um, finalized here at the aquarium and, and with some animals and also at a rescue center. It's something that we share uh, with folks uh, throughout the world. So obviously the facilities in California do the same thing. They've shared it with Mexico. We've shared with Washington State and Alaska folks in Australia and South Africa as well. Um, and uh, so, yeah, it, it's something that's really caught on and, and something that we really helped start. That's so fascinating. Uh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad to hear that that's that's spreading and that's a thing that's that's now growing. It's being done because they they are obviously do need that help. Uh, Sean, you've been sorry. I've just put you on the spot there right away. Uh, Sean, <laughs> uh, you've been on you've been on so many of those uh, of those rescues and of those disentanglements in particular. Um, what's uh, what's what's the secret? What makes um, What makes such a, a, a what makes a disentanglement successful? So, what are the the components uh, of of the whole procedure? Honestly, it it starts before we even get on the water, and that's where uh, M's planning comes in and <laughs> Lindsay's problem solving comes in. And so, they actually make it possible for us to get, actually get onto a boat and save these animals. So, um, it's it's a ton of planning and uh, and logistics on their part. And then once we've got that sorted, it's a real early morning and, uh, and, a, and a fairy breakfast, which is the <laughs> highlight of the day. Just kidding. Um, and, uh, and really, it's just kind of communicating with each other and, and keeping our eyes open and kind of coming up with ideas if we don't, if things don't go the right way or we can't find the animals and then coming up with another way to approach it. Um, and then... Honestly, the darting part is the easiest part of the day, right, Marty? <laughs> yeah, it is, yeah. Um, the actual disentangling is is very fast, as you'll see in the show. Um, it, that takes the least amount of time, uh, pretty much of anything, of the whole process. Um, but, yeah, I think it's we really work together well as a team, you know, with the, the fisheries officers um, and everybody that's kind of out there with us. And it's just such an awesome feeling at the end of the day to know that you've helped this animal that's been so negatively impacted by human behavior and human activity. And it's, um, and it's so special to be able to share it with, uh, you know, the people that you work with every day and some of your closest friends. So yeah, we're really lucky. And um, I'm going to give this next question to uh, Courtney because um, when Sean talks about the animals that that come to the rescue center in, in sometimes questionable condition, um, the the number one patient uh, that we get there is uh, the harbor seal, and uh, we rescued. I think to, when this was filmed, we rescued uh, over 80 animals, including. Uh, a newborn otter and um, Courtney you'd never worked with uh, veter uh, sorry with um, marine mammals before right I have worked a little bit just through vet school but um, it's a little bit different once you're the doctor and you're you have to make those decisions so yes I'm, a, I'm definitely a new researcher 
And what's was it like? Or maybe we should have a look at one of those seals. Let's let's look at an actual seal. <laughs> we get more of more than 80 of these uh, every year. Usually it's more than a hundred even. Let's have a look at an actual harbor seal. And I think we can actually talk uh, on top of this as well. If I just saw the uh, go down with the volume a little bit, uh, Courtney, can you can you tell us a little bit about what makes these animals so special? What's so unique about caring for a marine mammal like this little harbor seal pup? So um, I definitely can't complain about my job that I get to work with you know these animals every day, um, but they're really special just because you know aside from the aquarium and taking care of those resident animals, is we give these animals a second chance and. Um, you know, we all come together and we make, you know, give them a second chance and have them, you know, go out in the wild if we can. Um, but what's really special is, you know, we're the only facility that can do this in Canada. And they also kind of, they give us a lot of information on what's going on with our oceans. Um, so we can get a lot of information about certain toxins or pollutants and, you know, impacts of plastic. So it's really nice to be able to work with these animals and kind of get an idea and gauge, you know, how, how our ocean health is doing. So... Um, that's kind of a little extra special part of, you know, getting that information and, you know, treating each animal, taking that information and, you know, learning from them and trying to do a better job each, each time, you know, each year, I guess. Yes. Um, well, your, your time at the aquarium and the rescue center is going to come to an end sometime this year. Uh, what is the thing <laughs> Don't that... Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's just scheduled, right? I'm just reading my notes here. It's not me. Um, yeah, it is, unfortunately. <laughs> Mario's too excited about it. <laughs> is, is, there, is there one thing that you're really going to miss? What are you going to miss the most? Oh, gosh. I, I know. <laughs> I am going, I won't admit this again, but I will definitely miss these people that I get to work with. They have raised the bar incredibly high. Um, and like, you know, Sean said, they do become your family and they do become your best friends. And you just, you wake up and you're excited to work with them and learn from them and, you know, get the job done and take care of these animals. And yeah, they, I'm going to miss them all very, very much. Aw. <laughs> I don't, I don't know at all. <laughs> yeah, and Lynn's my cry. <laughs> um, okay. Um, one of the, one of the animals that uh, that is featured in the show, uh, Wild Pacific Rescue, is uh, Joey, a sea otter. Uh, that Joey? Does anyone know a Joey? I've never heard of Joey. No. Joey. Yeah. I've no. It's like this this smallish brownish that? thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Lots of it fur. Didn't take up our whole lives for a year. Nothing. Like no. that. <laughs> okay, I think uh, for those who haven't met Joey yet, it's time to introduce you to Joey. So I'm going to run another clip, and this is Joey, the rescued sea otter pup. This patient is Joey Clam Chops. He is a neonatal northern sea otter pup. Pups require a lot of care. There's a lot of sleeping, a lot of eating, and a lot of grooming. <laughs> Again, you just had something. It's a huge complainer right now. Okay, I'm just gonna grab another toy. Oh yeah, that's it. Ah, he was so cute. Even though none of you remember him. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Sean, I'm going to give I'm going to give this question to you um, yeah. because um, I think you are you're most connected with this animal at least in when it comes to social media because you've gained so much of a following just for posting your pictures <laughs> of uh, caring for this particular animal. Um, I'm going to ask you one of those questions that we've also heard many many times before. Um, is uh -huh. Joey in any way special? Is there anything unique about him? Anything that the other sea otter pups don't have? <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, I feel like that's kind of a loaded question. Honestly, I got to be careful what I see here. <laughs> I know there's a lot of joy people out there. Um, you know, every otter is unique um, in their own way. And, and they each have their, you know, special little characteristics that, that kind of just draw you to them. But I think the coolest thing about Joey um, is how many people he actually was able to bring together and kind of bring joy and some happiness to people all over the world in such a crazy 
crazy time in the world. Um, you know, it's, it's actually incredible. You see that, that video clip of him and he's just this little brown fuzzy thing that is really loud and piercing, but everybody around the world just loves him. And they've managed, you know, managed to create this, um, kind of community of people and, you know, people have become really good friends and, you know, there's, there's art and there's, um, now cartoon videos and, um, and features all of the other otters at the aquarium as well. And I think, I think that's kind of Joey's legacy is that is, is how this one little fuzzy animal brought together so many people and made a crazy time in the world, just that little bit easier to, to bear. Yeah, that's certainly a feedback we've gotten from so many people. Um, I, I think more than 8 million people watched the Joey live stream when he was in the nursery and uh, later as he was introduced uh, to the other animals at the Vancouver Aquarium. Um, and yeah, he's probably the reason why we have so many people watching this today. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I, I can only encourage everyone to try and uh, get this show on your TV. Um, it's uh, going to air on Cottage Live uh, on the 14th as at 8 p.m. Uh, Pacific time and Eastern time. And uh, Joey is featured prominently in the show. So if you like Joey, you, you're really going to love yeah. that. I'm actually going to play one last clip uh, of Joey um, just because... People haven't had a chance to see this footage. Um, it's it's another clip from the show. And uh, then I'm going to turn it over to questions. And uh, just uh, while this trailer, uh, sorry, while this clip is running uh, to everyone watching, you can submit your questions on Facebook and on YouTube. Just uh, use the chat there. And our amazing moderator team is standing by to collect those questions. And here's more of Joey. Here you go, a present from me to you. Okay. Yeah. Actually, we're going to have so there's some some issue there. Um, <laughs> I'm going to get this. It's because Marty is in the clip. I think that's the main problem. But <laughs> oh, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> <There's> <laughs> it's revolted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Marty. I, I should have known this. Whenever Marty is prominently featured, um, you guys want to tell me a story. What's your favorite rescue uh, of the last season? The season that's featured in in the series. Let's start with. Uh, Emily hands down Buckethead mm -hmm. he was my favorite <laughs> you're going yep. to have to explain um, who Buckethead is um, well I don't want to give away too much because um, he makes a, an appearance uh, I believe but um, it was a, a young stellar sea lion that had been uh, entangled in what we first believed to be um, the rim of a bucket lid one of those five gallon white buckets um, and it, it's just it, For me, and I think probably a lot of the team would say this, it was a really, it was a lot of time went into him. So we originally got the call um, and report about him in uh, January. And we went out to where he'd been located in February on Valentine's Day. And he was a no-show and we were all very disappointed. Um, and then, yeah, a lot of drama, a lot of um, exciting uh times with Buckethead so um but I, I I'm being cryptic because I don't want to give it away <laughs> did we get him did yeah. we not I don't know I don't yeah. know it was yeah but you guys yeah. will find out yeah <laughs> you guys are taking this no spoilers thing seriously I love it well, we keep uh, getting slapped around when something <laughs> yeah <laughs> no we don't <laughs> Well, we can Does tell people me? that it's all really, really <laughs> exciting. It actually is, uh, whether whether you've seen any of this before or not, it's it's always exciting. Just watching this is uh, is, is getting me all excited again. And uh, I, I know I was on that boat and I was watching Marty take that shot and I was like, nah, he's never going to hit it. And, uh, and then he <laughs> Whoa, did. Hey, so. who know? Oh, spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> Marcus, someone almost got eight on that um, trip. Maybe that was what was the biggest impression for you. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's <laughs> Poor Anna. <laughs> <laughs> no, <this is> <laughs> okay, I've, I've got this video clip going now. Uh, as Marty mentioned, it's filmed in 4K. So was my footage. So um, that's why we didn't see that quite right. But let's, uh, let's watch Marty and Joey. Here you go, a present from me to you. Okay. Yep. I can do you that. Back in? No, I'm afraid of this thing. Well, you should be. You riled them up. I riled them up. Oh, I riled them up. Oh, I riled them up. Oh, he's a bad otter. He's a bad otter. He's a bad otter. 
Who's a bad otter? He's a good otter. He's a good otter. He's a good otter? Yeah. All right, you monkey child. Who's your friend though, huh? Who's your favorite bet? Who do you like more than? Yeah, me or Lindsay? Me? Oh, that's weird. It's gonna be me, because I'm gonna go up some ice. Oh, icy. Flash. Here, buddy. Okay, that's such an adorable clip from the show. Uh, Marty, did we ever resolve the question, who's his favorite? No. Oh, well, there's no question. I mean, come on. <laughs> <It's Sean>. <laughs> <laughs> there, that's no question. Yeah. I think my job was just to roll him up and then leave. Um, yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> and that was fun. Bye, guys. Hey, I got to go. one, Uncle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's the about 10 seconds that he got to spend with the animal, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I remember. Yeah. No, he's a he's a very special animal, and uh, yeah, no, he definitely gave us a little run for our money there, and um, yeah, he was uh, he took up a lot of time, and as Sean says, I think for a lot of us, um, he was a huge highlight in an otherwise trying year, and uh, and the attention he got worldwide um, was incredible, and I and I think he. He, he helped keep us running when times were really tough and the frame was closed as well. So, yeah, we, uh, we gave a lot to him and, and he gave a lot back to us for sure. Um, I'm actually, I'm actually going to try and go through some of the questions. We got so many, so I'm sorry if we're not getting to all of your questions, but we only have a limited amount of time. Um, Let's try this one. What? Uh, it's a question about the show. What was the most challenging part of making this show and how long did it take? So how long was filming? Um, I'm going to ask that question. I don't know. Maybe Linz. What do you think, Lindsay? Yes. Yeah, so we, um, we started filming beginning of July, mid-July time, um, about a month after we reopened from COVID. Uh, some of the trips that we took, we actually did some pre-filming um, we, and then you'll see with the, with the animals that are coming in, um, a sea turtle and I think one other, yeah, Archie, another animal too, which you'll obviously get to meet in the second episode, third episode, whichever. Um, so yeah, so <laughs> basically from middle of July to working into October, which is our busy season with mostly obviously harbor seal pups um, and a lot of disentanglements, but also throughout the winter, um, kind of redoing some of the things, some of the sound bites and, and things as well. Uh, but mostly in those in those four months there, we were, you know, three, four, sometimes five days a week uh, with the crew following us from sun up or some sun up to some de- sun down, um, having, you know, the, the five of them um, really involved with every aspect of, of our program from our staff to our volunteers to, to the trips that we took out to, to for the rescues. Right. Um, I'm just going to hop randomly through those questions because we have so many. Uh, Marty, there's one for you. Somebody wants to know whether you've watched Danger Bay as a kid. <laughs> yeah, I mean, without a doubt. And uh, and, and it's Robert. fun. I, I mean, it was based out of the aquarium. In, in fact, uh, my pre- predecessor, Dr. Dave, um, had a kind of recurring kind of side role and a lot of the staff did too. So yeah, it, it, it certainly brings back a lot of memories for everyone. And, and, and yeah, you know, that was such an inspirational um, series for a lot of us that are, are involved in this sort of thing, especially those ones that are a little bit older than others. Um, but, uh, yep, you got it. It's, it's, it's the new Real Danger Bay, I suppose. Um, yeah, I, I remember watching Danger Bay. A lot of it was, uh, uh, or at least some of it, was about um, you know wildlife uh, issues, conservation issues that they were touching upon. Whether it was things like poaching, um, that that got a, a bit of a platform through that show. And one of the questions I have is um, connected to that. Maybe what's the one issue that is facing uh, wildlife conservation that may not be in the media or is is often uh, overlooked? Um, I'm gonna turn that question over to whoever who, whoever wants. Anyone on the panel? Maybe Courtney. What about you? <laughs> <laughs> I know this is so mean. Oh God. I don't know. What do you guys think? I mean, pollution, the plastic pollution is a big thing that I think we just need to draw more attention to, and that's what we're trying to do. But something that I don't know. What do yeah. you guys think? Can I can I jump in? 
Yeah, go for it. Yeah, I, and 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 and, uh, and I apologize, Courtney, but but one thing that doesn't get mentioned a lot of is is actually disease and pathogen pollution, and because of human activity, because of climate change, um, animals are challenged more and more by by diseases they've never come into contact with. So we have a sea lion, for example, with us right now that that might be. Um, uh, definitely has some kind of uh, brain disease. Some of that might be related to protozoans that have been uh, released into the environment. So in the single cell um, animals that have been released from, from agriculture or runoff or from, or, or from cats or, or that sort of thing. But, you know, associated with human activity and how we change things might be associated, uh, you know, another cause of, or cause of that might be gamoic acid, which is a biotoxin ca- caused by diatoms that that bloom because of increased nutrients. And we, and we find our, you know, our red tides or diatome blooms or our algae blooms or harmful algal blooms are increasing in frequency. And that might have something to do with climate change. It might have something to do with increased runoff and nutrient availability. So, um, yeah, I, I feel, you, you know, plastics and pollution, we, we, we get that. Um, but the whole idea of disease and diseases changing and we're in a COVID, uh, you know, we're in a COVID pandemic. And I, and I think um, those issues will, will come to light and, and people are starting to get the idea of how we're all connected and, and diseases spread through us might jump from humans to, uh, uh, to animals, animals to humans and that sort of thing. So I think that's one thing that might not be represented quite well. Yes, and it's it's also one of the things that you get to research uh, through your work at the rescue center um, when you know when it comes to to diseases that are just only now emerging that that haven't been studied in, in marine mammals before. It's sort of an early warning system. The rescue center, right? You're absolutely on, uh, on right. A lot of what we do is monitoring our animals for diseases that they may, they may have been exposed to, banging tissues from the animals that come in. Uh, that might be used in, in the future to retrospectively look at, for, ex- for example, when did West Nile virus hit, hit our shores? When did um, avian influenza hit our shores? And now maybe when did COVID? Um, you, you know, our animals are, are acting as kind of a biosecurity monitoring system for us. And we have those samples that help research those kinds of diseases and their exposures. Right. Um I actually want to give uh, Lindsay an opportunity for a public service announcement because she's been talking about uh, elephant seals, northern elephant uh, elephant seals. And there was one question uh, coming through the chat. Have you had a rescue of any northern elephant seal, especially weanlings or pups? And Lindsay, what do you want to say about elephant seals in general? Yeah, we, we have treated a, a handful of elephant seals in the past. Um, right now within British Columbia, um, and actually up and down the West Coast, elephant seals are molting. So they go on the beach for three to four weeks and they basically spend their time, um, usually in California, kind of basking in the sunshine, flicking sand on their backs. Um, but you would get the juveniles up here who are just a little bit lost. Um, they were going through their first and second molts. Uh, a molt is something that that happens uh, annually for these guys. Basically, they lose their their fur and they also lose the top two dermal or skin layers as well. So it can get pretty nasty um, because these are such docile animals too. You, you know, they are quite approachable, uh, laying on the beach, just trying to go through this process that's quite lengthy. Um, you know, people are quite concerned. Uh, their skin does look a little bit nasty. They have lots of um, discharge and stuff coming out of their nares, their mouth. So um, obviously we let uh, the public know that these this is actually as abnormal as it looks. It's a normal process that elephant seals go through. And we work very closely with fisheries and oceans to be able to uh, monitor these guys while they're going through this process. We've currently got a couple elephant seals within British Columbia that we are monitoring and fisheries has put up some signage. Um, and uh, flagged off some areas just to allow them to do what they do for their four-week period. And they also don't eat in that time span too, so they do lose up to about 25% of their body weight, so they just don't look great, but um, it is a natural process, and we have to let nature take its course. So the basic message, just let them be. Yeah, and if they have concerns, the best thing to do is call us or call fisheries, we can give them some information. We can, uh, if we know about the animal, then we can monitor it. Um, sometimes these guys do get a secondary bacterial infection on their skin, and sometimes that's when we do um, intervene. But until then, um, we just let nature take its course. Right, and I'm I'm gonna pose one question that we've got in the chat, and I'm gonna uh, put that one to Emily. Um, People have been watching uh, other uh, videos from the Monterey Bay Aquarium, other places around the world that care for otters. 
Um, and uh, at their rescue places, people wear face shields uh, and masks uh, so that people don't get too attached to them. Why is it that uh, we don't do that here? And why don't we release those animals back into the wild? Um, well, I think Marty would probably be able to tell you a little bit more about it. But from what I know about it is that we we don't have any kind of uh, surrogate program. We don't have a surrogate female. And um, the great majority of the uh, sea otters that we get in are, are very, very young, like days, a couple weeks uh, after birth. And so they essentially are non-releasable once they come into our care. And that's just because the time frame that they spend with their mom is so critical for her to teach them all that they need to know for, uh, you know, being a wild sea otter. And, and we just, um, you know, obviously can't, uh, we can't keep up to mom. So um, yeah, I don't know what else, what else would you say, Marty, in response to, to that? No, you're absolutely right, Emily. I think the key is, uh, well, there's, there are a few things. First off, the, the surgery programs are great, but but they don't always work. Um, and and, um, and there is a little bit of shift in focus on those as well. Um, but for us, um, we make a determination right off the bat that says that otters not going to be released for the young pup. And, and otters do depend on their mothers very, very much so for learning how to forward escape predators, just like Emily said. And so once that decision is made, it, it's a shift into gears into, um, you know, acclimating that, that individual and making sure that animal can be as happy as possible for the rest of its life and know that people are cool and okay and fun and part of the whole thing. And then introducing that animal to uh, conspecifics or other otters that are appropriate, um, uh, you know, for, for long-term housing. So so that's really what it is. With animals that, that are releasable, we, we, you know, we definitely switch gears. We just don't get those animals very frequently. Um, <clears throat> we do get some adults, um, but but they they're very challenging and, and come to us with a number of different problems as well. Um, so yeah, DFO um, makes that determination um, very very early on in the process, and then gears are to acclimation and making life as fun as possible. Right, and that's true for every animal, not just sea otters, which are, we probably have to add are, are very rare patients. It's not something that we we admit every year. It's it's still a sort of a novelty for us. That's probably also why where we don't have those uh, surrogate and release programs that uh, that they have in places like Monterey Bay, where they have so many animals uh, that need help every year. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to get to a, a funnier question. This one's actually posed for Dr. Marty. Our, our fan community, our Joey fan community, is dying to ask you one question. Why is Teslina so flat when she sleeps? And I should add, Teslina is, um, <laughs> <laughs> is a sea otter. That's not a nice thing to say about our female sea otter. Um, <laughs> is, that, is that a real question? I, I mean, no, they're, I, they're I serious. Like she, she yeah. looks completely <laughs> flat. Like somebody like rolled over her with a truck. Like she really looks like that. Oh, well, there was that one time no. when Emily was back <laughs> truck, and uh, we don't try and talk about that. Uh, yeah, it's just her body conformation. Uh, so she does have a, a slightly flatter rib cage than the, the other ones do. It's it's also her her um, you know she's she's not as plump as some. Um, and, uh, and some of the animals, uh, especially females, as they age, do, you know, have mammary tissue in the pelvic area that kind of creates a little few extra bumps and will deposit some adipose there as well. Um, and of course the boys have a few extra lumps and bumps there as well with their anatomy. So, um, yeah, she just kind of, uh, is, is that way for a lot of good reasons. Um, so, you know, we all, we all look a little bit different, I guess, <laughs> especially Sean. <laughs> um, okay, um, I'm, I'm going to use the last couple of minutes uh, to uh, maybe talk about a little bit more about your experience behind the show, but I, I, I was dying to play some of these video clips that I had queued up here. Um, <laughs> yes, um, the, the relationship between Lindsay and Emily is, is one of my favorite things at uh, the Rescue Center because I see these two together all the time. And there's, there's one, one particular clip that's, uh, that's, um, yeah, that's giving people an idea of what it's like if uh, Emily and Linz are in one place together. Have a look. No, we don't never we tease each we other. We stopped listening to him a while ago. What? And uh, little spaces on TV look like big spaces, so it is good that you're standing that close together. You no put, yeah, you put yeah, your arm in front of my arm. Not like that. 
<laughs> you like twin. Twin. <laughs> and then at the end we just skip away. It's not that kind of program. No. Could okay. be. That's Unless our next angle for that, um, that could be our next demographic. No, that's but our next angle for uh, Amazing Race. That's another story. Yeah. That's a whole other bag. He's, of he's trying to be serious or no, no. actually get something done. No no. Okay. Um <laughs> I think that was about you, I don't know, um, goofing around or anything. No, that it's never happening. It's totally serious. So that show was pretty much just like that discipline from, from beginning mm -hmm. to the end. 100%. Yeah. yeah. We, actually, I, yeah. I, we actually got in trouble a couple of times because we, they, we, they were like, you need to be more serious. And we're all like, what? Just serious. Well, that's not who we are. Yeah. We know. <laughs> no. And I don't have any audio on that clip, Mar Marcus, no. but I could probably have like dubbed the <laughs> conversation. Yeah. <laughs> that Definitely. would be fun. Let's do that. Let's yeah. do that. <laughs> It's too bad we, when those clips are playing, we also don't have your audio. I can still hear you, but nobody else can. But we're, we're mm -hmm. going to do that <laughs> the next time. And uh, just because I showed the two of you, I should uh, also show what Dr. Marty is like behind the scenes. Because if you think oh, that dear. doctor and his name means anything, like just uh, just have a look. You know what this skit needs? Oh, no. no, it doesn't. <laughs> what does it need? Oh, God. You know what I think this scene needs? More cowbell! <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get the belly thrust. I know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so disturbing. So disturbing. Use the room. And what I does he say? What's his experience? Explore, explore, the explore the studio. <laughs> I can't unsee that. <laughs> The funny thing is that Dr. Marty actually didn't see. <laughs> I didn't but see anything. <laughs> I'm in some weird view. But I heard it was the cowbell scene. It was. <laughs> are, are you a huge fan of SNL? I may or may not be. Yes. Uh, yeah. No. No. That was. I don't know how we started that, except that we just sort of. <laughs> That's kind of typical life in the office, I think. Yeah, uh, I was just about to ask, oh, like, ask, <laughs> to ask Sean, like, is that representative of a day in the office if you're working with Dr. Marty? You mentioned something yeah. like that on the podcast. Is that what you meant? Uh, that's exactly what I meant. And when I tell people that I get more work done when he's not there, like, I'm not joking. And it's because of stuff like that. It's extremely hard to get anything done when he's in the office. <laughs> But it makes it, you know, it's never a dull moment, so... Oh, it's not like that all the time. I mean, maybe just like 98% of the time. Maybe. No, Marcus, put it this way. I spent a couple of days uh, a week in the office from January to March. And um, Gabe is the other veterinary technician that's there for three other days. She has a rear view mirror on her <laughs> monitor. Just to make sure I'm not up to something. She can always see what's going on behind her. <laughs> yeah, It's handy. Uh, I, I do like to play a few tricks on them. <laughs> yeah, I remember the first time I saw Dr. Marty at MMR, he was joking about my German accent and was mimicking me behind my back. And uh, like, I, I, could oh, not, I couldn't crazy. figure out I what he was going on. I would never do that for your crazy <laughs> German accent. Who would ever do this thing? I don't know. It's so funny. It's like, what you call that elephant seal? A weanling? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <sighs> I don't know how the camera no crew safe. survived you guys. Um, they didn't for a whole year. <laughs> Oh, we did get some good, we got a couple really good punks in on the mm -hmm. producer for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Remember what we told them that uh, you guys got lost in the transport over to. Uh... <laughs> well, yeah, some guy named Tony was bringing me over. On Tony, the Tony. <laughs> yeah, we missed the ferry, and Tony, this nice guy with a pickup. Paul's boat caught, caught on fire. And... <laughs> That's right, the drone, yeah. the drone broke. <laughs> and the scary thing is that could be an actual story, like these things happen. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I would ever put Sean in Tony's car. <laughs> I, don't that, but, I don't know but who yeah. Tony is, but that sounds <laughs> shifty. Just, <laughs> just, just made no. him up. Uh, Seemed appropriate. Oh, I've been watching too much Criminal Minds. <laughs> <laughs> <Excuse me. laughs> 
Okay, you guys, our panel is almost near the end. Let me have a look whether there's a question. Mm -hmm. There was one question that came up so many times. Um, actually, it's it's twofold, and I'm, I'm going to post that to the whole panel. Somebody please answer that. Um, one of the questions is, how can I get that job? Um, and the second question is, uh, do you accept volunteers? How do I become a volunteer? Do we have some generic answer for that? Lindsay, you're up. Well, that is I a good just... question right now, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> Oh, maybe, maybe Emza. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll address Jimmy the Baxter. volunteer uh, question first. Um, we have an amazing volunteer program, and um, we have some of the most amazingly dedicated volunteers that help us every year. Um, unfortunately, due to COVID, um, we are unable to uh, recruit new volunteers uh, for the second year in a row, but obviously hoping that um, as time goes by and as everything gets back to normal, we can start that recruitment process up again, but likely not for this year. Um, and does somebody else want to do how to get a job? Or do you want me to keep going? <laughs> uh, I'll keep going. Um, <laughs> yeah. <you> go. <laughs> Question is, do you really want one? Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, the, uh, the great majority of the team at MMR are uh, registered veterinary technologists. Um, and so I would suggest looking into there are a bunch of really great um, uh, vet technology courses all across Canada. Um, but yeah, definitely look into something uh, like that. There are two year and three year programs. That's a great place to start. And I know, um, I'll, I'll start. You go ahead. No I, could, I was going to plug Courtney and, and, and their, their role. And, and that's our veterinary internship program or veterinary fellowship program. And, and these guys, Courtney, cover your ears, um, are <laughs> the most smartest, talented, most wonderful young veterinarians ever. Our program is so competitive. Um, they come and spend a year with us. We break them a little bit, um, but uh, they get some neat experience. But it's become so competitive and, and all of our interns move on and, and are involved in the field. Um, but um, that, that's a really great opportunity, and they bring new energy and smarts and put us through me in particular to shame, and they're, they're just, uh, you know, incredibly wonderful people. And, and you can tell I'm the old guy here. Everyone else is not a Definitely, guy. yes, and, we can tell. Yeah, yeah, and, and there's a good reason for that. And, and um, you know, the vast majority of these folks are super talented young women coming to us from, from all over North America um, that are just you know, fantastic doctors are just taking the next step. So super proud of those guys. But that is a job opportunity that comes up every year for the right person. Okay. There's a question. Actually, somebody wants to know if you can sign their uh, Dr. Marty doll. Um. <laughs> no, 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 we, that, the, no, we can't do that. Because he we takes need to no keep, ownership. We need to keep the price high. It's a very rare item. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, Absolutely. one last question that I'm going to post to everyone in the in the panel just to, to close this session. Uh, what's your favorite thing from the entire show without telling us actually what it is? That's that's a new trend. Uh, so without spoilers, what's your favorite thing in the show? Let's try this with Naughty first. Oh, I, that's really Remember, hard. no spoilers. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I, I really like the show. Um, we haven't seen um, the show uh, in its entire, you know, in, in the in the package, actually. So we, it's hard to kind of comment. We've seen some um, uh, rough cuts and, and, and things. I love the way the team comes out. Um, these guys come across the way they really are, which is incredibly talented, funny, devoted, smart, accomplished. Um, putting their hearts into every day and caring for the animals. And I'm so proud of these guys. And, and, I, and I think that really came across well in the, in the show. And, and that's because of who these guys are, um, but also the camera people. Um, we trusted them and, and they, yeah, they did a good job and we're, we're right where they need to be. Didn't get in the way. And I think caught us as we really are, which is, which is great. Yes, I think I think that's true. Just from from watching the little bits that we that we've seen, um, I'm gonna post the same question to Linz, Though uh, I'm I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna qualify that by saying, you can also uh, just tell us what was the, uh, the f your favorite part about making the show. So, what's your favorite bits from the show, or or the your favorite part in, in making the show? I mean, there there's there was so much packed into such a short period of time. Um, it 
it really captured some of the relationships that we have with the, our volunteers. Um, you get to see exactly what our volunteers do, which is really fantastic because obviously, you know, we're such a small group of, of staff and we have over a hundred um, 150 volunteers this past summer. Um, so you get to t get to kind of see a little bit of them and I hope people get a chance to see some of the great work obviously that that we're doing um, overall. But yeah, I, it's hard to pick just one thing. Um, obviously these, the relationship that I have with these uh, these guys here plus the other staff um, on site, it, it does come out a bit and Hopefully, uh, yeah, people get to see that. Um, it's it's hard to pick something that that just kind of points out. Um, you know, I think, yeah, the crew we got to work with um, were fantastic and super supportive, which I think it was it was new for all of us doing such a big production um, and new for them too to be in, a, in this type of setting. Right. Um, same question very quickly because we need to come to an end. Uh, Emily. Uh, you know, I, I thought from the very first time I ever went out on a disentanglement that if people were able to come out and actually see the impact that you can have on one animal in that instant and just like change their life. Um, I've always thought that would be such a great thing. Like more people have to see this, more people have to know what we do. And here's, this is awesome opportunity to just bring you all along with us and um and the excitement and the drama and is all real so yeah you get to see what it's really like it's 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 all real that's that's i think that's a, a good thing to say because um yeah it, it's not scripted those things and those things actually happen you might think that marty is an actor but no he's he's like that and for real yeah. like this this I, is I unscripted i've hit a lot but that, yeah. <laughs> Never. <laughs> okay, I'm going to post the oh, same yeah. question to Sean. Um, I would probably echo what uh, Marty, Linz, and M have all said in that the crew and the people um, that we got to work with were amazing. And it's so fun to get to do um, the job that we do with, with people that we consider some of our closest friends. Um, Content-wise, I think my th I, I have like a four-way tie. Um The Joey story, I love. Um, Archie, I love. Buckethead, I love. And there's a duck as well, which um, which I love that part of the show too. So, uh, yeah. So those are my favorites. Yeah, I was so sad. I didn't. I didn't see. Uh, I didn't see a clip of the duck to show people. Um, I do have. I think that's in episode two. Oh, it's in episode two, of course. All my clips are from episode one, which um, will be the first we're going to be able to watch uh, all together. Um, Courtney, I'm going to ask you the, the same question. Is it all about the people or was there anything else that stood out? Um, I guess it's really nice because they highlight some of my favorite cases and favorite animals that I got to work with and learn from. Um, and it's been kind of cool to have like, your fellowship on camera. So I'll always have these memories and things to look back on and And it's just, it's cool to just to have that and to go back and see what we did and, you know, see the interactions with each other. And it's just like, I have this little keepsake that I can take on with me. So that's probably my favorite part. Um, okay. Um, I think that's actually it. I can't believe we made it through the hour. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for watching uh, for watching this live. I'm sorry, there were a few technical okay. issues. Uh, we recognize that, but I hope uh, we, we made it all through that together. Um, I'm actually going to say goodbye and thank you to Dr. Martin Holina, Lindsay Ackhurst, Emily Johnson, Sean Cahoon, and Courtney Pace, my panel. Thank you, all of you, uh, for taking part in this. And uh, did you have fun? Did you enjoy this? Be honest. Yeah, it was good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we, I mean, except guys. I mean, if there's a little bit more me next time, that might be better. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I hope they'll get to do this again sometime soon. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you to my producer, Kendra Luku, who helped me with those questions. And uh, also thank you to my moderator team who collected all those questions. I'm actually going to show you the trailer one last time so that you know what you're in for. Uh, the show Wild Pacific Rescue premieres on Cottage Life on the 14th of April at 8 p.m. Pacific and Eastern Time. Thanks for watching and good night, everyone. On Canada's magnificent Pacific coast. Let's go get them. A group of charismatic and devoted veterinarians has one mission. Giving these animals a second chance at life is just the greatest feeling. 
saving the lives of wild marine mammals and setting them free. There you go, big fella. That's how you do it, my friend! Their motto? Every animal counts. Wild Pacific Rescue. Series premiere, April 14th at 8 on Cottage Life. Like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> Good.